welcome to this series of videos about CorioMaster and how to set it up. Uh, so far you've seen us uh, network into the box, you'll have seen us set up this simple 2x2 two two video. Well I want to take this a stage further now, I want to add some more sources and create some animations on screen. I'm logged into my choreographer and uh, at the moment I'm in immediate mode so anything that I do will, will, will change uh, as, as I do it which is really handy if you're trying to set up. A um, couple of things I want to explain to you before I, I get started creating extra windows. Across the top you'll see this green bar. This is the bandwidth I have on my video wall, 600 megapixels per second. And at the bottom left, these are my separate video walls. I've only got one running at the moment, but on a CorioMaster Micro, I can have two video walls. Uh, on a CorioMaster Mini and a CorioMaster, um, they can run four canvases or video walls. So this is what we call this space, a canvas. And this is where you can mix displays and projectors and make your spaces that you want to put sources on top of. On the bottom right, you can see uh, the number of uh, windows or sources that I can place on my displays. And you can see it shows it on this particular video wall and also system wide. So th these will change as I add more windows. So this is going to be my starting point. And what I want to do in a moment is fly on another window. So I've got a couple of sources here. They're playing off my uh, 4K media streaming and playback card. This is my second source, it's a, of a jellyfish. And you can notice right away that my bandwidth utilization has gone up, also my window utilization has gone up. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start this off screen, just to the side, and then I'm going to, going to fly on. So to do this, we set presets. So down here at the bottom, we hit preset, and we give it a name or a number. So this is going to be, um, this is going to be the Bs, uh, full screen. And every time that appears, I want it to appear over two seconds. Uh, and you'll, you'll get some more idea of what that means in a moment. Um, my second preset, I want to fly this off. And uh, as it goes off, I want to rotate it. And also I'm going to size it down a little bit as well. Um, and then this one is going to fly in and take its place. Okay, and this is going to be uh, preset number two. Uh, and this is going to be uh, jellyfish full screen. Every time this flies on, it's going to come on in a second. Um, if I put zero in here, uh, the transition will cut, and, and I can make this up to 60 seconds long if I want to. So, so far I've got two presets, um, and let's just add a third. I'm going to have both sources together. So I'm going to have this one here, and uh, this one's going to straighten it out. I can also type numbers in the bottom here and I've got a little arrow buttons as well. So this is going to shrink down and this one's going to be uh, both sources. Now at the moment these are different sizes. If I want these to be the same size I've got a handy little tool for this. So select one, select the other and here is my resize tool. So those are now exactly the same uh, size together. And I'm going to use my arrow keys on my keyboard and I'm just, just position these pixel by pixel where I want. I also want to add a border now. So double click, and if you come down here, you can see we've got a number of settings. We have shared settings. So uh, the, these are shared because every time the instance of this uh, source is used, it will apply it across all. So I can set some cropping and also the source loss color. Um, and also I've got some audio management there as well. I have some general settings. Uh, so the general settings allow me to uh, to flip or change the Z order. Um, we always work within a Z order, so layers are sat behind each other. And I'll show you how that's represented in, in a second within the display tree view. Um, transitions, which we'll, we'll come to in a moment, so we can uh, do some source transitions. Uh, and we wanted border, so here's the border tool. And I want to uh, just change the color. So we're going to have this green and uh, at the moment I'm in immediate mode, so it happens when I uh, click on it, and we're going to change the border on the other source. And uh, this is going to be a lovely blue colour, light sea green it's called in the software. Actually I'm going to change that because it's not that obvious on, on, on the video, so let's change that to yellow, so that's, that's a little bit better. This is going to be uh, both sources, both, and this is going to appear over one second. Okay, so we've got three presets now. 
Um, anytime we want to edit these, we've got an edit tool so we can go in and change the length, uh, change properties in it as well. Now, uh, so far I've been in my home mode, my wall editor mode, so the home is where I logged in. Wall editor is where I've been doing this uh, editing. Uh, now what I want to do is go into my dashboard to control these presets. So here they are, here's the three presets, here are my two sources. So, and as I fire between them, you'll see the, the, the window uh, will animate between them, so like, almost like a DVE effect. And then here's the, the third one. The great thing is I can do these in any order. So I can have up to 50 presets, uh, and they can be uh, in any order I, I want them to be. Now, if, if I wanted to use source transitions, for example, I can do that as well. So if I just wanted to have this, and then I wanted to maybe fade this through black, that's really simple to do as well. So uh, as I come down here, if I go to transition effects, these are all my transition effects. So I'm going to fade it through black, and I'm going to uh, shrink it as well. Um, so that's going to be that, and we're going to change, the, as it happens, we're going to change the source to media 2. So you can see it's cut there, but I'm going to set this as a preset. So this is going to be, uh, going to happen over one second, and this is going to be, uh, I'll call this source switch. Yeah, and that's over one, so we're going to add that. Now, if I go between preset 1 and preset 4 now, what you'll see, let me just go back to preset 1. So this is cut back because I, I didn't put any duration between those. But if I go source switch now, you see it, it uh, DVEs down and it fades through black at the same time. I can also do a spin there as well. So they're the two ways we do transitions. And obviously, once you get a, a large amount of windows or sources here, you can do some quite, quite cool looking uh, effects. Now, um, in terms of control, um, I'm obviously doing this through the, the, the software. I also have a console control as well. So this sits down here, and this runs in the background. And if, if you watch the first video, you'll realize this is also useful for um, if you're having customer service issues you need customer service support for. This is really useful. Um, and you can fire uh, presets in here as well. And it's really simple, plain, plain text. So if I go preset dot take equals two, for example, and fire that off, um, that will fire off a transition. So that's really handy if you're working in AMX or Crestron. Uh, or another control service and you want to know the commands, they're fully available online as well. So that's how we set up um, uh, multiple windows. That's how we set up presets. Um, and of course now, the, the next thing I need to do is um, go save on device. This is great because this saves the power on configurations uh, for the unit. So I can even save the media player to start playing. Um, the great news is this unit comes up in about in a minute and it'll be all up and running in the settings, and off you go, you can fire commands at again. Um, we can also save to file. Um, this is really, really useful. So I can give it, give it a name in here, and um, I'll, I'll just call it training, and, and save it. Um, and that file now is saved on my PC as well. It's also, you can navigate to it through Internet Explorer, and you can email it. So um, it's really handy if you're setting up multiple units, but you're not connected to it at the same time. Obviously, if you're connected uh, to multiple units over, over a network, you can load the same file, but it's just useful as a, as a disaster recovery to, to hold on your PC or to email to people if they need the file. Um, so that's how we set up Windows. Um, that's how we set up presets, and that's how we save all of our uh, settings to our device and our PC.